For Wednesday, right? Yeah. I did it, and there's Tom. Secret play. Welcome to Retired Time Productions. Hello, YouTube. Here is the Fox Ear Legend 1 camera. Let's take a look. So I got the Fox Ear Legend 1 from Surveil Zone, and it came in the mail fairly quickly. And comes with a manual, a spread out sheet like this, but it has some nice uh, pictures and diagrams for the PC configuration tool software. We'll take a look at that later. Here's the camera, and I'll get it out of the box. Now, one of the things I noticed right off on this no lens cap that I can tell. That's what was in the box, including the instructions. Well, I guess if you don't have a lens cap, you could always put it in the foam container and put it back in the box and protect it that way. Also, if you look at the Mobius, here's the, here's the Legend 1, here's the Mobius. One thing I always liked about the Mobius, I'll put the lens cap on since it has one, is it came with these little cradles and things, and you can put the, uh, the Mobius in the cradle, and you can put it on a tripod or mount it on some of the different mountings so that you can put on your head or on a bicycle or whatever you want to put it on. The Legend 1 does not come with that so I didn't see any other hardware and there's no hole on the bottom to mounting anything. I think it's probably aimed just at FPV. Just put some velcro on the back and stick it on whatever you want. Slightly bigger size as you can see and the weight's a little different too so we can take a look at that on the scales. I'm going to go ahead and put on the Legend 1 and we got 50 and a half grams. Now let's put on the Mobius. We got 47.2 grams. So there you go. Not a lot of difference. Maybe 3.3 uh, grams. Okay, also in the box we get your standard USB cable. And that is the mini type. Not the micro, but the mini type. Just like the Mobius. There is no memory card when you get it. I've got a memory card in there now. I've got a 16 gig. As usual goes in upside down just like it does on the others. But when you get it there's no memory card so if you try to uh, record something. So three beeps turns it on and then you press the shutter button to record and it'll just beep a couple times telling you there's no memory card. This light won't flash on and off until you it's time to record. So that's how it comes. To shut it off, you just hold the button down. It's still erring because of the memory card business. There, seven beeps turns it off. And yeah, I like the audible beeps. That's a nice feature. The uh, Mobius and the Runcam HD don't have any feedback. So you may think that's a good thing, maybe a bad thing. Maybe you want to be stealthy and you don't want it to make any sound. This goes into the USB port. It has a 10-pin connector. And out of this, this is called the AV cable for some strange reason because I found out just like the Mobius there's no audio out so it's I guess it's just V. There's no audio so how can it be AV? But it does have one cable here to uh, control it remotely. You hook this to your receiver and you can program a switch on your radio to take movies or take a picture. And then this cable here which is yellow and black is where the video comes out and then there's uh, power. If you want to power the camera off 5 volts, there's this red and black one, all on servo leads. Now as far as the size and fitting into my uh, pan tilt rigs, you can see that it will not go in where the Mobius went. It's a little wider, won't fit in the slot. That's on my Skywalker. Now over here on my Twin Star, where I have a different kind of pan tilt, it just has the platform it will fit on that. So there's no problem if you have that type of pan tilt. It'll accommodate the Legend just fine. Now as far as the noise interference level for the Legend, it's very similar to the Mobius. You can look at some other videos on that. I think I recommend uh, Bruce Simpson. He had a good video where he put it on the Spectrum Analyzer and measured the noise level, but it's basically the same and there is no extra interference with the UHF 433. It's about the same there too. So Now as far as the external buttons you can see there are just two whereas the Mobius has uh, three. That's because the Mobius has a mode button. With this one the modes are combined in with these two buttons and they're not too hard to use. 
It also has three lights. It has an indicator light here above the shutter button and there's one back here called the tail light. The charging indicator light for the camera is actually a little light on the back right there and that stays green until it's charged and then it goes out. That kind of fooled me because I thought it was this bigger light, the tail light on the back that was going to be the charging indicator but it turned out it was this little light here. Okay all you have to do to get the video out of this is just plug in your little AV cable, supposed AV cable, and then uh, use the yellow and black wire to go to your video in on your monitor or to your video transmitter. Alright, that's if you want to use it for FPV. Let's take a look at what we got. I tried to hook the camera to my monitor using the video out signal right here on this servo plug and I could not get a picture and what I found out was there was actually a bad solder connection or actually a shorted solder connection inside this connector. Solder had actually blobbed up on that and when the when the cover is put on, the yellow wire actually touches this metal case right here and shorts it out. But I'm going to go ahead and uh, insulate it with some liquid electrical tape. And So I put the liquid electrical tape on it, just letting it dry, and then I'm going to put it back inside the case. Okay, here we are right here. You can see it on the screen. One thing I notice with the picture is if you're in low light, you'll get kind of a green tint to the picture. I don't know why that is, but I don't know if that's adjustable. We'll take a look at the software later. I don't think it is. I believe that the software doesn't even have anything for you or saturation. But there it is, looking at the monitor. And interestingly enough, you'll see these bars down at the bottom and top that give you information. It even tells you about the microphone, but like I say, there's no audio out. So you're not going to get audio to your TV that way. Now you might with the little HDMI port on the back if that goes directly to a TV but not just with the analog video okay let's do a little latency test see that you can see it going down through there so there is quite a bit of delay I don't think you'd want to put this thing on a mini quad you might have trouble with proximity flying, but if you're just flying around having fun, just looking at the scenery, it might be okay. But there you go, that's the latency. Much more than a board cam. Okay, so here's the latency test with the board cam. Just very quick, just flashes through all the frames really quick, much faster. And also much brighter too. As you can see, the board cam really picks up the light better. This is underneath the bench where it's like totally dark. It looks grainy, but it still picks up the light. So that's why I like flying with a board cam as far as my FPV view. You can even see when it's pretty dark out. So here's the board cam I was just using in case you didn't know what I meant by a board cam. There it is right here. Some of, are in, some of them are in a plastic pack like this. They can't record, they just simply put out analog video. Here's one that isn't in a, in a plastic pack right there. It's mounted on this piece of wood right here and I've sprayed it with some Plasti Dip. But uh, same thing, this is a PZ0420. It's just not in a case. So the reason to use these cams is to capture HD video and the specialty about the uh, Legend 1 is it does 60 frames a second. It'll also do 120 frames a second in 720p. So here's the basic uh, spec sheet. You might have to freeze the video to look at it, but uh, there it is. And you can see in the center there the different video modes, and down the bottom is the photo resolution modes. We already know it has the audible beeps for feedback. It has a lithium ion 850 milliamp hour battery that's rechargeable. As far as the file format that it creates, it uses JPEG for the photos and MP4 for the video. So let's uh, start the Legend 1. Just turn it on. Got your three beeps. And then we'll turn on the Mobius. Wait for the Mobius to come on. There's the yellow light. And they both start the same way. 
They'll both be in 1080p, but of course the Mobius will be 30 frames a second and this will be 60 frames a second for its default startup values. Okay, let's go ahead and just press the shutter button on both of them and get them going. Alright, I'm starting the comparison. The Mobius is on top and I've got the Legend 1 on the bottom. So here it is just looking at some bright areas in the room. I'm going to start there and just go into a dark area and let you compare the two of them. So going into a dark area, there's not much light down this part of the, uh, of the basement except for some windows over there. But you can see here, I'm looking into a very dark area now. You can compare that. One thing I've noticed about the Legend, it seems to have some uh, horizontal lines that make it kind of noisy. So there is dark to light comparison. Now let's go outside. Okay, I'm outside now. You can also be uh, listening to my voice and see how the sound of the Legend Wand is. But uh, here's what it looks like on a nice sunny day. Just looking around. And now let's look up at the sun here. Go back and forth so you can see how it adjusts to the sun. Like that. And now I'm just going to go quickly around in a circle. We'll compare, see how it handles fast, fast motion. Seeing how it handles fast motion. Okay, there we go. Now I'm dizzy. All right, we're going to take a look at the focus. Here we go, moving in. I'm about uh, seven feet away now. There's six feet. That's about three feet. That's about two feet. One foot. Now we're down to about six inches. I think that's going to be about the limit. But we'll go further. There's about three inches and that's about an inch away which is going to be blurry I'm sure okay this is the field of view test and you can just take a look at that and judge for yourself which has the widest field of view the legend is supposed to have about 160 and uh, the Mobius wide angle is about 120 that's what the specs say but uh, take a look see what you think I was trying to download the video footage off the legend and it locked up when it was plugged in the USB port. And now it won't turn off. I'm holding the button, trying to see it won't go off, so it looks like I'm going to have to use this reset hole on the back here. Okay, I got the, something stuck in the reset hole. Let's see if I can press the reset button. And there it goes out. So it looks like it's back to normal now. I'm on the Fox Ear Support Center page right here, and you can look at the address up here if you need it. But this is where you can download the firmware, you can get the configuration tool, the PC software, and the manual right here. So I'm going to go ahead and get those. So here's all my files that I've downloaded. I think the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and update the firmware, and that's this bin file right here. So let's just go ahead and plug in the legend camera, like that. Automatically it comes on. All right, there is the window showing me the camera. Now let's see if I can drag the bin file in there. Copy it here. Copying over. There we go. Now, once I've done that, I should be able to just restart the camera. I'm going to get rid of this temp bin file here. Just make sure that's gone. Okay, now when I restart the camera, it should write this firmware to the camera. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. Okay, I turned off the camera and then turned it back on. 
and the tail light blinked about 50 times. It took maybe a, a minute or so, or half a minute, I don't know, for the firmware to install itself, and after that, the tail light stopped blinking and it beeped three times and it was done. Okay, now let's go ahead and plug in the camera again and see what happens. Okay, camera's coming on. And there's the update bin right there. And now we have a new temp bin. But I'm just going to delete this update bin because we don't want to keep installing that over and over. So just in case, I'm going to delete it. All right, so now we should have new firmware. Don't know if that'll help with the lockups that I've been having. Sometimes it locks up when it's on the USB port. But uh, I got that done anyway. Okay, now let's go ahead and run the configuration tool. And that is right here. It's the HD camera V1 configuration tool. And this is what it looks like. Right now there's no information up in this window. Let's go ahead and plug in the camera. Actually, I'm just turning it on. Okay, it's coming on. I don't really need to look at the window for the camera, but here is what we have now. So right now, you can see it's on 1080p at 60 frames a second for the movie mode, which is right here. And then mode 2, it's got 720p at 120 frames a second. So if I go to that mode, I'll get a movie with 120 frames per second with a smaller picture. And then mode 3 is for taking photos, and it's on 16 meg right now, right there, 4 by 3 So that's that. And then we got the video settings. You can see you've got video quality. We've got field of view. And I understand the field of view, if you change this, it just crops the picture, from what I've heard. Um, so I'm just going to leave it wide. The time lapse is off right now, but you can do time lapse and you have all these things here that you can do like up to 60 second time lapses. Uh, video stamp is off. I don't really want that. I don't want time and date or anything on there. So the default settings look pretty good to me. Photo quality is fine. And auto shoot every three seconds if you want that. Photo stamp is off on that too. Uh, you may want to turn it on for a photo, I don't know, but I'm just going to leave it off. System settings, NTSC is good for me, uh, image rotate, normal, I don't want to rotate it, but if you had it upside down on something, you might want to rotate it. And here's your light frequency, 60 hertz, auto shutdown in three minutes is fine with me, and the date format, but I'm not using that anyway. Now the image setting. We can have center, which is good. I like center. And uh, there's the, uh, the ISO is right here. It's on auto, which is fine. White balance is on auto. So that's everything that you can change right there that's in this version 1. Uh, we've got EV down here that you can change. I guess that you could change that if you wanted to. I don't think I'm going to change the EV. Up here you can save your profile if you want to, but uh, it's default, so I'm just going to, I don't want to bother setting it or saving it. If I set something in it and I change something, I'll probably save it. Um, so that's all there is. It's a pretty simple config tool. There is no feature in here to install firmware that I see. So you saw how I did the firmware. I had to just put the bin on the card and reboot the, uh, the camera. So that's it. Okay, let's compare the movie files between the Mobius and the legend. Let's look at the size. Now you realize the legend was in 60 frames a second. They're both 1080p, but the, the higher frame rate gives us a slightly larger file. So this file is, uh, as you can see, is 758 megabytes right there. And for the Mobius, it was 524 megabytes. So if you have any more questions you want to ask me, just leave them under the video. If there's something more you want me to test, uh, I realize I can't fit everything, all the testing, into one video. So just let me know what's the most important to you, and maybe I'll try that and see what happens. Obviously, some flight video might be nice, but I will get to that later. But anything else you want, just let me know. And we'll see you on the tube. Secure flight.